Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm pleased to present the findings of our recent customer segmentation analysis on behalf of my team. I am Miracle Isimuze, the team lead. And here is the content of the entire work that we are presenting today. And in the executive summary, we've been able to summarize our strategic recommendation uh, based on customer segmentation in order for Serenity Retail Store to effectively engage you know, um, all customer segment across the company. We've also detailed some information about the retail store globally as well as some information about Serenity Retail Store itself. Uh, what is the problem that Serenity Retail Store is trying to solve? They are trying to understand their customer base, right? In terms of demographics, purchasing behavior, and psychographics. So we are here to help them understand their customer base, help them segment it, profile those segments, so that they can better engage you know, with their customer uh, base. And the methodology we have adopted in solving the problem that has been presented to us is extracting data from SQL, making assumptions on those data, cleaning up the data, um, analyzing the data, creating dashboard, and at the end of the day, coming up with recommendations and also coming up with uh, performance metrics for the company to adopt. We have gone ahead to um, segment our customer based on certain strategy, right? Um, using certain criteria like age, gender, education, occupation, marital status. We've used all of these categories to try to um, segment the customer base for serenity retail so that we can further dive into profiling each of those segments, which um, we are doing uh, uh, next. Here, we have decided to introduce uh, segmentation profiling based on demographic purchasing power and um, psychographic characteristics. And then we further uh, break down the customers of Serenity Store in order to understand their preferred products, their preferred channel of adverts. And in doing that, we were able to break the customers down in terms of the data provided into young adults. And we discovered that this constitutes about 75% of the total customer base of the company. And we've listed some of those trending products that they prefer and their preferred channel of advert. We also identify, we've also identified the 18% middle age category of Serenity retail store customers and the products that they prefer and their preferred channel of advertisement. Um, we've, we also identify the elderly that form about 7% and then the product they also prefer and their preferred channel of advert as well. We didn't just stop there. We have also gone further to categorize this customer into low income customer, middle income customer and high income customer. This is to further help the company tailor its marketing strategy in terms of providing discounted product to the low income earners, promotional product, um, low price product to them, to you know, providing status product to the high income earners, exotic products to the high income earners, and then as well as the middle income earners as well. And we've also done, done some form of profiling in terms of mar marital status, where we discover that the singles constitute 33% of the total customer base of Serenity Retail Store, and the married constitute about 32.7%, and the divorce constitute 34.3%. Um, we have also gone further to profile the customers in terms of purchasing behavior. 
their spending score, their preferred channel, their annual spending as well. And we also went further to look at some psychographics and characteristics as well in terms of number of vehicles, number of children, home ownership, membership level, just to further understand the traits, the personalities, the value of these categories of customers. And here is our first dashboard with all the KPIs um, clearly defined. The first chart here is helping us to categorize our customers you know, um, by age group. So we look at the various age and try to understand which of the age constitute the most of the customers. And we discover that the age 25 to 44 constitute that 75% that we had talked about earlier in our segmentation profiling. And then we also look at an average spending score by age category. And it is interesting to note that the young adults, which we have categorized as age 18 to 45, they actually spend more. It's quite understandable because they, they don't seem to have as much commitment as the middle age or the elderly. Then we also look at average income by age group. Here we discover that the middle age um, customers, they earn more. And then the young adults earn um, close to the middle age customers. It's an interesting um, insight to have so that when tailoring marketing strategy, the company can effectively target these categories of customer just for the fact that they are likely to have some high disposable income, you know, for them to, to, to dispose and spend. Then we also looked at um, divorce, um, the, the divorce, the single and the married. And then we discovered that the divorce seems to spend more compared to singles and married. And we looked at average spending score by education. And that revealed to us that um, the PhD high school and the bachelors, they spend more compared to master's degree holders. And then in terms of occupation uh, by annual spending, the craftsmen and the clericals and others, they spend more, most especially the craftsmen, they spend more annually compared to servicemen that spend uh, less. So it's also important to know what kind of item, for instance, the craftsmen are spending their money on. Are they craft item or general item so that the, the company can effectively tailor its advertisement and marketing effort in that direction? And then we also looked at annual spending by age category. So we discovered that the same age category that forms 75%, they spend more annually. And then in looking at preferred brand by age category, you discover that this particular age category that are majority of the customers and that spends more, they prefer brand B and then brand A uh, compared to brand C. And then we look at brand preference by gender. And here we discover that the female folks prefer more brand A and brand B, while the male customers, they prefer more of brand C. So it's also interesting for the customer to understand what products are in those brand buckets in order to effectively market those products to the right gender. And we look at customer based on home ownership and their membership level. And we discover that customers that own home um, tend to favor the VIP membership more. And then in terms of channel of um shopping we discover that there's really no preference between male and female in terms of shopping online or, or in-store and um, visit so we, we discover that there is really no difference in in their in their preference for their shopping um, um pattern then we also looked at education by income level for the phd they seems to have more income, the PhD and the high school, they have more income compared to bachelor's and master's degree holder. And um, our other dashboard also reveal annual spending by vehicle owners, right? 
So we discover that those customers that have two vehicles tend to spend slightly more compared to customers that don't have vehicles at all or have one vehicle. And then when we also looked at um, customers that own vehicle that have children and how are they spending annually, we discover that customers with three children and with two vehicles, they spend more. And then um, when we investigated pre uh, preferred membership by gender, we discovered that the female customers, they prefer the VIP and the premium membership more than the male. Why the male prefer um, the basic more than the female. So it's also good information and insight for the company to have. And then um, looking at percentage annual spending by number of children, we discover interestingly that customers with just a child, they spend more compared to customers with two, three, or four children. One would have expected that customers with two, three, four children will spend more, but that is not um, the case. When we also looked at education by annual spending, we discovered that P the, the customers with PhD holders, they tend to spend more, you know, um, compared to those with master's holder and those with bachelor's and high school also spend more compared to uh, customers with master's holder. So one thing that we did was we didn't just stop here. We decided to dive deeper into understanding this customer's behavior according to different location in the rural area, in the suburban, in the urban area. So when we looked at customer category across all of these locations, we discovered that the same young adults dominated across the three locations. They still represent the 75% customers across the three locations. So what that means is the company can actually deploy the same marketing campaign campaign across the three locations and they will still be able to target the same category of um, of, of customers then looking at average income across the three locations as well uh, we also discovered that the young adult and the middle aged customers are the high earners across the three locations and the two of them combined together form 93% so whatever marketing strategy is targeted at the young adult and the middle aged customers can actually be deployed across the three locations and it will still be effective. Um, looking at annual spending across all locations as well, we discovered that the young adults dominated you know, annual spending across all three locations. So they spend more both in rural, suburban, and urban areas. So in that wise, the company can as well also dis deploy uniform strategy across those three locations and still be able to target the right customers. Then when we looked at brand preference across these three locations, it says differently. Um, different genders prefer different brands in different locations. So what that means is the company cannot deploy the same market, marketing strategy across these locations. They need to be careful to target um, different genders in different locations with different brand in order to make their marketing campaign and marketing strategy more effective and engaging. Having done all of this analysis, we came up with um, the following recommendation. The company should allocate additional marketing resources to promote trending product that this young adult that forms 75% of the total customer base will need. All of this product that we have detailed in the segmentation profiling, the company should channel efforts, more resources to ensure that these products are always available and put in the face of these categories of customer. And not just stopping there, we also recommend that since these categories of customer, they are mostly on the internet, the best channel to reach them through advert is through social media. So effort and more resources should be channeled towards reaching these customers via social media in order to effectively engage 
with them. And because this level of customers also constitute this huge number, 75%, we also recommended that the company should ensure that the trending product, the kind of product that they prefer, should be regularly stocked, should be regularly available in stock for them, you know, in order to effectively engage them and maximize sales. And not just stopping there, the 34% VIP membership, the company needs to also ensure that the luxurious products, luxury product that they, they like, is always available in stock for them as well. And then we went further to recommend that the company should consistently engage with its VIP members with exclusive you know, events that will help them engage with them one-on-one -on -one so that they can, from time to time, better understand their preferences and you know, their behavior per time. And then we also went further to recommend that the company should maintain both online and in-store presence because the majority of its customers, both male and female, they actually prefer both channels. And then finally, we, we recommend that middle-aged customers that boost the higher income from our analysis and the young adults, which are the, the spenders, the, co the company must pay attention to these two class of customer, you know, in terms of marketing strategy, engaging with them, and, you know, constantly keeping in touch um, with them as well. Having given all of this recommendation, we decided to propose certain performance metrics that the company needs to watch out for in order to really stay on top of their game. Uh, we are recommending that the company should maintain a minimum average spending score of 51. That is where they are currently. They shouldn't fall below that. They should monitor it and watch it. Rather, they should make effort to ensure that they increase it. And then secondly, that the company should ensure that its total customer base do not fall below 10,000 that it, it, it is currently. But rather, they should strive to improve that number and then um, the company should monitor its annual spending to remain above 50 million that is where it is currently they should improve on that number and the company should from time to time monitor customer churn rates ensure that they understand are they losing customer are they gaining customer it is very very important to keep that customer number up there and not allow it to drop. The company should also strive to de determine average transaction value. So each customer that walks into the store, each customer that visits the online platform to make purchase, the company needs to ensure that they are monitoring how much are they spend averagely. If it draws below um, their projection, they should intensify their marketing effort to ensure that they are meeting their target. Also, because they have these huge categories of customer that, that form that 75% that are mostly on social media, they cannot afford to keep their eyes off the social media. They need to be on social media monitoring their engagement with this class of customer from time, customers from time to time. And also, they need to, from time to time, get feedback from their customers um, analyze those feedback and then implement those recommendations from those feedback. And then finally, um, we are con our conclusion basically summarize what um, we have put out there as our findings, as our recommendations, and as our performance metric, encouraging the company to try to adopt our recommendations and um, our performance metrics and better engage with their customers and here is to acknowledge all Fin bravo members that contributed to this tax and made it a success we say thank you and we appreciate all your work and your contributions thank you